It's the most tremendous new musical experience you can have. All right, what's up, y'all? It's Logan, and I'm here bringing y'all this review to this newest Reason album called New Beginnings. Uh, now, Reason is the newest signee to TDE Top Dog Entertainment. Y'all know who that is. You got Kendrick, you got Zaya Rashad, Schoolboy Q, J-Rock, Ab Soul, SZA. I mean, y'all know everybody that's on this label, and the one that everyone cares least about is reason now maybe some people might say lance skywalker but i'm gonna be honest with you i like lance skywalker he just doesn't drop enough solo work i don't think he's dropped since like 2013 or something like that if i'm honest and he only has the one project he needs to drop some more but it was good anyways all right back to uh reason reason i say no one cares about him is because i'm on hip-hop twitter and everyone talks trash about him he's not trash though he's not he's, he's a good artist he just uh says some weird stuff you know um and when I say weird stuff, I feel like he hypes himself up too much sometimes, acts like he's bigger than what he really is. And then other times, um, he says things just to be saying things. Um, kind of like T.I. or like Jada, Jada Pinkett Smith, um, how they just say things to make themselves sound smart, but really they don't know what they're talking about. They just... Uh, like, whenever you hear an argument and someone's using statistics that they don't actually understand, I feel like that's what this guy does sometimes. But anyways, this is his TDE debut. Um, and, I mean, you can tell that it's a TDE album because TDE's all over this dang thing. I mean, they, so many great features. Really good track list when it comes to features. Um, it's not a terribly long album either. It's 14 tracks and 47 minutes. Um, so it's not terribly long, not too hard to sit through. Um, let's go ahead and get into it though. Let's start with the pros. So first off, Reason, he's got a good flow and a good sound, you know. Um, I, I could tell over a lot of these tracks, of course, with good production because again, TDE. Um, <laughs> he was flowing over them. He, he matched them very well. He, he's a good writer. You know, he has some good bars. Like I said, you know, he, do, he does occasionally have that bar where it's like, okay, you just said that to sound smart. You don't actually know what you're talking about 100%. But regardless, he's still a good writer. So it still takes a good writer to say stuff like that. Um, so, I mean, I, I liked a couple of his bars on here. Of course, you have the TDE collabs. You know, you're getting a Schoolboy Q feature. You're getting an Absol feature, one the guy that we haven't heard in forever, really. Um, you're getting a uh, Zay feature. I mean, you're getting some good features on here. And then even outside of TDE, you got a couple good ones. I'll talk about those later, though. Um, and then all together, you're getting actually good content. Like I said, it all adds up to some good content, some enjoyable stuff. Um, now my cons, like I said earlier, he's the most hated and honestly the worst artist on TDE. That's not saying a lot because most artists on TDE are great. So that's like comparing him to near legends or, you know, top five rappers of all time in the case of Kendrick. <clears throat> uh, but, uh... I mean, overall, you know, he's the worst. But again, that's not saying a lot. You know, he's still a decent artist. I just, it is surprising that he's on TDE considering the level of talent of everyone else compared to him. Um, like I said, sometimes he forces lines, says some iffy stuff just to make a point. Specifically, a good example of that is a line about Mac Miller he has on the song Fall. Um, I'm not going to say the exact line, mostly because I don't know it off the top of my head. Yes, I could look it up, but I didn't care enough to, if I'm totally honest. But uh, he basically is talking about how um, labels can trick artists to sign places. And they're like, you know, you, you need to know what you're looking for. Um, we have what you're looking for, blah, blah, blah. Um, and he talks a little bit about Mac, like Mac Miller signed this um Sign this, sign of this label, and then you know he uses drugs to help find what he's looking for. That leads to his death. You know, you can't be saying stuff like that, especially not someone with a following like Max, someone who it's like almost as bad as if you said it about like Juice World. You know, uh, kind of similar situations there, of course. Um, I, I just felt like that was really disrespectful, um, just to make a point that I'm not even sure you 100% understand. Um, so I didn't like that line. Not that it was a bad song, or not that the point went over my head. I understood the point, and what his point is not a bad idea. It's just that he went about making it the entirely wrong way. Um, now my last complaint is that, you know, like I said, this is not a long project. It's only 47 minutes, but it feels a lot longer than that. Um, 
I don't know. He just uh, the way he's able to keep your entertainment and, and attention is just not the best. Uh, to where he makes forty seven minutes feel a lot longer. If I'm totally honest. Now, if I'm going to talk about the standouts, I'm mostly going to just talk about the um, tracks with features on them because that's what really made this album. Um, you got Pop Ish, of course. Y'all know what I'm saying. PG on here, um, featuring Schoolboy Q. Um, let's see. First off, what I'm going to mention is that uh, Reason had some good bars on here, specifically about NBA players. For example, he says, "Took too many steps like the Rockets," and then he mentions James Harden. Of course, everyone knows the old joke: James Harden travels all the time. You know. Um, I'm not going to get into that debate whether he travels or not. Yes, it's a 90s travel, but a 2020s travel, not so much. You know, it's his gather step, blah, blah, blah. Whatever. Uh, that's not the point here. Um, I, I enjoyed his bars about the NBA players. I think overall he does pretty solid on this track. However, Q comes in and kills it. Um, he sounds way more natural over this beat than Reason, which is weird because it's Reason's track. So, you know, maybe you do a better job finding a beat that suits you. And then find an artist that suits the track with you rather than having a beat just for the featured artist and then you don't fit in as well. But I digress. Uh, Q absolutely kills it. Like this beat sounds like it was made for him. Uh, it sounds like a song where if they had swapped the verses, like Q goes first and Reason goes second, I would have thought it was a Q song. Totally honest. Um, other than the fact that it appears on Reason's album. Uh, both do well regardless. I just think Q absolutely murders this compared to Reason. Um, now after that, we have I Can Make It featuring Rhapsody. Y'all know Rhapsody. She's one of my favorite rappers. I think she is arguably the best female rapper of all time, right up there with the likes of um, Lauren Hill. God, she would have put out more than one album. Um, you know, Queen Latifah, MCA, you know, people like that. You know. Um, either way, Rhapsody, I think, is right up there, and I think she's the best rapper to come out of my home state, North Carolina. I love J. Cole, love you to death, but uh, you don't reach her level. Um, anyways, this is a very chill track. Uh, Reason gives one of his better performances on the entire album, which is lucky because Rhapsody, again, kills it like she usually does when she's on the mic. Um, now, Reason does a good job. He comes through with a very chill verse, very easy laid back, some good lyricism. Um, again, over a chilled laid back um, track, chilled laid back vibe, beat, all that, you get what I'm saying. Then Rhapsody comes out here and comes out aggressive as she can be. I mean, uh, otherwise um, laid back track, she comes out extremely aggressive, so I was impressed with that. Um, yeah, definitely worth checking out because I really enjoyed Rhapsody's sound on that track. Uh, and after that, we have Showstop. The only reason I mentioned this one is because I thought we were about to get a K-Dot feature. Um, you get on this track and you hear his voice and he's going, Showstop! It was just a sample of his voice. I heard that and I was like, okay, I know that's a sample, but come on, just just give it to us, give it to us. Nope. Um, it's a good track, it's a good track, but it pissed me off, so I don't ever want to listen to it again. Um, and after that, it's not a standout track. No, but now after that, we have Flick It Up with Absol. And man, I was really looking forward to this one because I ain't heard Absol in a long time. He ain't released an album since, what, 2017, 2016 even? Um, very enjoyable, upbeat track with some good flows. Reason has a line, um, God bless him, talking about how he grew up wanting to be Wayne, wanting to be Ye. Now kids grow up wanting to be him. What? Um, but anyways, no, no one's wanting to be um, Reason. Everyone's wanting to be Kendrick. Everyone's wanting to be Juice World. you know, whatever. Whatever end of the spectrum you fall on. Everyone's wanting to be Drake. Ain't nobody wanting to be Reason. Um... Regardless, Absol comes on here and he has an, a, a good verse. Not the best feature verse out of everybody. Absol's not my favorite TDE artist either, although I know how great he is. Um, it's just great hearing him again, man. And I cannot wait for his album. You know it's got to be coming up, hopefully soon. Hopefully they don't wait for this pandemic to end because, man, I don't want to wait that long. Who knows when it'll be over. Um, yeah, Waiting for his album, though. Uh, Sauce features Vince Staples. Uh, and Vince... It's not my favorite Vince feature, but it's it's good. Uh, it's not as good as the one on um, Pressure in My Palms from Amine. Uh, let's just say that. He kills that one. But anyways, uh, this is not a notable track. I just had to talk about it because, again, Vince features on it. It's a solid uh, feature. 
It comes in really smooth sounding compared to his normal aggressive sound that I vastly prefer. Um, but it works for this track altogether. Um, again, I think maybe pick your artist better for the sound that you're going for. Not saying that Vince can't do calming, relaxing, but just the way that he rapped on this wasn't like he would have fit in better on a different track is all I'm saying. Um, like I said, it's not a standout track, but it's a decent track. Uh, and then the last track I'm going to talk about is Extinct featuring Isaiah Rashad and Jid. Now this one, oh, I saw this in the track list and I was like, oh, that one, that one right there. And I almost listened to it first, but I was doing a midnight list and I was like, well, if I'm going to listen to it at midnight, I might as well listen to it in order. Um, I don't regret that, but at the same time I do because this song was great. Um, it's another laid back track, um, very old school feel to it. And Jid and Zay kill it they should have a tape together their sounds work so well together you know say has his extremely unique voice that is extremely laid back but when he gets aggressive it's fun jid has this extremely unique voice that's generally aggressive but when it gets laid back it's so easy to listen to oh they could mesh so well together why do they not have a mixtape or an album together maybe this is the start of that fingers crossed um either way they work well together and i love when jed works with big names because he always steps up he always steps up and you know zay's a big name um even if he hasn't dropped since 2016 also uh but anyways um zay never disappoints i mean they're there uh, again there's a reason he is the second best artist on tde boom uh, mic drop um yeah in conclusion for this album though my first listen was really good it really surprised me how good it was on first listen the more I listen to it, though, it dies on me. Um, it's one of those where the individual parts are greater than the overall sum. Um, like I said, these songs that I talked about, most of them are really, really good. But everything else that I didn't mention, not that great. Um, again, just feels a little longer than what it is. For something that's less than 50 minutes, it literally feels 70 plus minutes long. Like, it feels like it's never going to end. Which is sad to say when I'm listening to an album. Um, again, it's good. It's a good album. It's just not great. It has great moments, um, but it does not stand out, especially considering what all, all TDE has dropped. It is better than Crash Talk, though. So there's that. He's, be he's better than the last rap album to drop. Not better than the last album. Sorry, sir, is taking that. Uh, anyways, my overall rating for this one as I'm wrapping up this review went a little longer than I expected. I'm going to go with a forgettable 7 out of 10. Unless I'm doing a listen through of TDE's entire anthology, just all of their albums, which I have done multiple times. I love TDE. I don't see myself listening to this entire album again. Some songs, surely. I enjoyed a lot of songs on here. Not a lot, but I enjoyed a couple of songs on here greatly. But uh, I do not see myself listening to this entire album again. It's just not a fun listen through altogether. That's just my opinion on this one, though. Make sure to hit me up in the comment section if you have a different opinion. Let me know if there's any albums you want me to check out. Hit the like button, comment, sub, hit the bell next to my name for notifications. I appreciate y'all so much, and I'll hit y'all up next time.